Hello everyone! This is an update to the Zygopetalum hybrid that I showed in a past video titled Frozen Orchids. This guy got left behind in the colds and um, several weeks have passed and you can see the damage now. Cold damage can take a while to show especially orchids with pseudobulbs. Sometimes they will take long to show you their stress. Um, not like a Phalaenopsis or a Vandacious orchid where when they're done, they're done. You can see it very quickly. When I brought this guy in, um, it was a little bit more firm. I still have high hopes for this because you can see, sort of, lighting's a little bit wanky here, but wonky. Still has two pseudobulbs on it that are nice and firm and green. They're wrinkled, but they're okay. And there is a third pseudobulb down here. Just teeny tiny little guy that's out of focus, but it's there. So we have two growths on this guy that aren't looking too hot. And it's time for them to go. So I'm going to cut them out. To get everything started, I've got a couple pairs of scissors, some cinnamon. I have already sanitized these. I use a flame and rubbing alcohol. Uh, it's the end of the day. I'm not going to be using these on any other orchids, so I'm not concerned about spreading infections. But I still want my cutting utensils to be clean to avoid getting bacteria into the cuts I make on the orchid should I cut too far, anything like that. Really just cutting it, period. And I really like the idea of, of flaming these. Um, my torch is low, and when I flame, I prefer to use a knife with a uh, wooden handle or a plastic handle, something that's not going to conduct the heat so I don't burn my hands, because it kind of carterizes the cut at the same time and seals it off. But I'm low on heat, and th the cuts, I don't think I'm going to have to make serious cuts here. So I'm just using these sharp scissors, some cinnamon to clean it out. It's also really important that your scissors are iridescent and rainbowy. Otherwise, this won't work because they haven't been blessed by unicorn. Yeah, my tripod just broke. Oh well, back to work. Okay, I'm trying something new and I have my tripod mounted to the edge of my pond. Pond. And there's a pump in here circulating water that kind of vibrates. So I don't know if that is going to uh, affect the audio. I imagine it will. If it does, then I'll just dub over it and it'll it'll be all right so looking in here i can see that there's still some green left but look at this rot this is the core and it's squishy but down here it still has some roots that look okay so i'm going to start from up high like so and start cutting yep there's the center. Still rotten. And keep going. Still rotten. Keep going. This is much more solid. Okay, look at that. Now, I'm gonna keep, I think I'm just gonna cut this entire pseudobulb out because that it's just going to keep rotting. It's not going to regenerate. And it's a little bit loose here but not quite loose enough to just pluck the whole thing out. Prob at least not without affecting the growth or the this main suitable here. I'm going to go ahead and try and get in here really low without cutting the main pseudobulb. And cut. Cut, 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 cut. Okay. Let's have a closer look here. So, down in here... Would you focus, please? Maybe not. Okay, well, anyways, down in here, all the way down at the root base is where these pseudobulbs are attached, and that's where I want to detach this rotting pseudobulb from this healthy, plump, fuzzy, out-of-focus one. Right, that's a smidge better. So hard filming under those red grow lights. They do not work well for filming. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to use my smaller scissors, 
try and get down there nice and deep. Make that cut. Right through there. Boom. And there we have. So they're disconnected now. And then I can now see inside of here. No rotting. Looks okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this old pseudobulb out. Give that another cut. Boom. Gone. Rotten pseudobulb. Gone. Here it is. You can see, if it were to focus, which it's not going to, the pseudobulb was toast. So getting rid of it was definitely the right thing to do. And now that cut was made really deep in there. So I do want to, I'm going to put some cinnamon in there to help dry it out, to prevent any rotting. And dab it in there. Could use a Q-tip. But this is kind of an awkward angle and I think I can feel it out better with my fingers. There we go. So got some cinnamon in there to help dry it out. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more in there and move on to the other pseudobulb. And this last one should be a lot easier to remove, partially because it's a lot smaller. I did go ahead and I rinsed the scissors off again with some rubbing alcohol. So start high, finish low. So this one, the rotting has pretty much already dried out and that's really good, but I still wanna make sure that it's out of there completely. This one feels kind of loose. I might be able to just tear it actually. When you have the option to use a hot knife, I do think that is a lot better because you get nice clean cuts. And when you have nice clean cuts, there's less area for bacteria to get in. There we go. So now I've pulled it apart enough that I can separate it from the pseudobulb and make a cut in there all the way down at the base. There we go. And that should... Oh! Scissors just fell in the water. That's not good. Let's hope they didn't land pointy side down because we're going to have a flood. And here's a better shot of what I just did. So that's where the cut was. There's still some green there, so that's good. I got it cut past where it was rotting on the other one. It was just rotted out all the way. Um, with the cinnamon, sometimes you gotta be careful not to get it on the roots, but there's a lot of dead roots in this pot already as it is. Looking at the color of the leaves here, these are shot, they're papery, they're not going to uh, help the plant in any way because there's no chlorophyll in them. Well, there's some down here down low, but I don't think it's enough to really help the plant. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off all the brown stuff here just to tidy it up since, I mean, not that it's really going to help that much. This isn't exactly looking like an orchid I'm proud of. But considering this endured multiple nights below 20 degrees, I think it's doing pretty well. So there we go. It's all tidied up, cleaned up. Like I said, this isn't something I would brag about, but I do think that this has a decent chance at recovery. Um, it'll take a while, but it should put up new pseudobulbs one day and be all right. Also, I should mention... It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to unpot this because there are a lot of dead roots in here and those dead roots lead to rotting which leads to infection and infestation of bugs and all kinds of nasty things but there are still some live roots too so I'm going to actually give this a little while to recover from all the stress it's been under probably a few weeks and then I will go ahead and unpot it and cut out these because I can see the dead roots up here in the meantime I will go ahead and drill some holes in the side to allow for better airflow, which with the zygopetalums, I don't tend to have them in pots that provide a lot of airflow because they're more terrestrial or semi-terrestrial. Uh, I really think they're more full. It's a different form of terrestrial. They, they don't grow in compacted soils. They still need loose, flowy mediums. But um, yeah, I'm going to cut some holes in this so air can flow through so that 
should the rotting continue, which I'm sure it will, it, it will at least slow it down a little bit if you have airflow in there and prevent molds and whatnots. So there we have it. Hope everybody's having a lovely day. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If not, you know, just go away. Don't be an asshole and give it a thumbs down. Just kidding. You do you. That's all. Happy gardening.